Greetings everybody, this is Sliced Lime. I'm here in a test world to try out the new command box for 1.9 that was introduced in today's snapshot. Earlier today I made an update video and if you haven't seen it, these are the new command blocks. There are three versions and this one is called an impulse uh, command block and it's just the same as it usually was. This is the old command block and it works exactly like the old command block, which is good because that means all of the stuff that we have all made still works. However, if you do combine them with this chain command block and this repeating command blocks, they do have a lot of new functionality, which will change the way we make command block contraptions entirely, more so than I could do in an update video. So what is the deal with these new command blocks? Well, the biggest difference is going to be in this little block right here, the repeating command blocks, the blue ones or purple ones or whatever you wish. And the difference is if I go say hi in this one and then set down a block, you can see that it keeps repeating and this goes every tick. So what this block does is it says goodbye to the need for fill clocks. Now, if you have more of these, they also execute in the order that they were powered within the tick, which means that there's no longer a need to know these exact, well, first the negative x executes and then the positive x executes and all of that. The update order is no longer as important. It is still important. If you get very advanced with command blocks, it will always be important, but it's not as important. That means that this block now gives us easy access to what fill clocks used to do, which is essentially looping. But at the same time, they give us more control over how we want to lay out our command block contraptions. And while talking about layout, this actually does also improve performance by a whole lot because we've been afflicted by this problem called the 63 clocking blocks limit. And what that limit essentially is, is when you update blocks in Minecraft, they get sent from the server to the client. And if you update more than 63 in the same tick, the server is going to send down the entire chunk rather than just the changes. So if I put one block here, this block gets sent to the client. But if I put down 64 blocks within the same chunk, then the server is going to send the entire chunk from the top of the sky to the bottom of the world, which is going to be a lot more data, which causes a whole bunch more lag. Now, these things are not driven by block updates the same way that the old command blocks were. So they will still propagate the block update if you use them the old way. But if you use these chain ones, then that's what these arrows are for. When it updates this block, it's also going to go and look, where am I pointed? And if it's pointed into a chain block like this, it's going to execute this block as well without ever updating these blocks. And then of course, once it's done that, it's going to look, hey, which direction am I pointing? Is there a chain block there too? Yes, there is. And it's going to execute that one too assuming that these are powered. And what that means is that we can update a whole line of command blocks in a single update originating here. But it gets better because if we don't power one of these, the signal will still move through this block and onto this one. That means that we can selectively turn blocks on and off depending on what their powered status is. So let's say we have redstone blocks here that we can switch on and off. That actually gives us the ability to simply make if then statements in Minecraft, which is pretty cool. There's also built into these blocks a power tag. So if I do slash block data on this thing and then so you will see that it has a custom name and it has a powered tag which is a byte value that tells the system whether or not this block is powered. Now what that means is if we don't cause any block updates surrounding this block, then we can actually set the powered tag from within a block data command and not have to do anything else in order to set whether or not this if statement should pass or fail. Now, because these are directional, there's even more we can do. So there's actually a possibility of doing this and turning the whole line to the one side, which means that you can have structures that go sort of in uh, bends like this, but you could potentially also do this and have a set block command for whether this should be turned 
to the left or to the right. Now what that means is that we have a good way of producing an if then else statement in Minecraft. Of course, if we do this then, they both go together here and our code continues executing after the if then. Now there's only one thing I would really like, and that is for this graphical interface to contain a button that says powered. I would like to switch a chain command block to always be powered, because that would allow us to save a lot of space. Right now, what you have to do if you want to run these as a chain always is you have to keep, you have to place them on top of a row of redstone like so. And that pretty much brings us back very closely to what we had before with fill clocks, even though these are not being set and updated every frame. This is not a fill clock in any way. It is still the case that you actually need to have a whole bunch of redstone blocks or, or levers or whatever it is that you power your command blocks with. And that is unfortunate since they are essentially now not really needed. So I would much rather have that state internally. One more thing I should mention. If you do want this to work without getting chunk updates, you have to switch the output off. So there's this button, switches between uh, like on and off, basically. If you switch this to off, and if we take a look at this, uh, if you do block data on this block, then you will see that this now has a track output set to zero. So we don't want to track the output of this command block anymore, which means it doesn't have to send the output to the client. Whoops. And that in turn means that there won't be any chunk updates. So if you want your command blocks to perform well in this update, you have to go in and you have to switch this off on all of them. And that's probably a good idea to do after you're done debugging so you don't get fooled if you do need the previous output field. And potentially you could do that with a bunch of block data commands or even like an MC edits filter or something like that to make it more convenient. If you just have a few blocks before this, you could have one, two, three, four, five different ways this could be turned and then they would all join back up here. So you would pretty much have uh, this go, oops, go this way. Uh, yeah, well, you get it. You get the point, and you can have one below, and one actually goes straight up through, like so, except like so. So that is a possible combination. And there's this one block under here that would control the flow of execution depending on some other values that you have in this arm leading up to it. You would have five different command blocks here doing a set block on this block under here to turn it different ways. And that way you could still run one chain, but that one chain is going to branch off in different directions. This block in here, the sort of branching block, the one that selects which direction the execution should go, can actually be an empty unpowered block. And that is because we want to do a set block on it and we don't want to have to copy that command five times. Before I end off here, I'm going to talk about one more interesting thing, and that is the way that this allows you to do conditional looping. So what you can do is if you have these two blocks, so say this block is sort of a gateway to this loop. And so basically what you would do is you would have some scoreboard value or something that you would execute to detect whether that was true. And if it was, you would set a block here that is exactly this block. It's a chain command block pointed this way and it can be empty. Uh, it will pass on the signal, empty and off doesn't matter. It will still pass the signal and activate the rest of the loop structure. Uh, and then you would have a second command that would test for the opposite of that. It would test that the scoreboard was not the desired value. And in that case, it would set an error block here, which would block the rest of the loop. So in the normal case, you would only be running these two commands. But in the case that the value was indeed what you wanted it to be, then you would be running the entire structure. And this one block here would just be acting as a sort of gate block. It would just pass along the signal. And I'm pretty sure that the performance impact of that is almost nothing. 
let me just say right now, I haven't dug into the code of Minecraft and I never will, but I do have experience coding games. So that is what I'm basing that assumption off. So to try to summarize this, I guess what I'm saying is why I think most people haven't really realized exactly how significant this is, is that these blocks now allow us to make control structures by the way we lay out the blocks. If we turn blocks, we can control the flow of execution between command blocks in different matters. And that allows us to build if then statements, if then else statements and loop control. And probably more. I hope this develops in an interesting new way. Things like the predator system that used a ton of blocks, but they're all really there to kind of branch off from one structure. So, in reality, all you really want is to run one really long chain of blocks. And that chain, all it really does is snake its way up in a branching structure just like this in a long, long way. And then it reaches one single block that gives you one single piece of armor. That is what that system already does, but it does it using fill commands and it's incredibly inefficient. And it would be really awesome to be able to make it with these blocks instead. And it would probably be, let's say, an interesting structure. This thing is going to sort of start in one block and then spread out kind of like a flower. So we'll see what the future snapshots bring and when they arrive. I think it's fairly likely that we'll be waiting a fair bit longer for Minecraft 1.9. It is the combat update and most of the combat updates haven't made it into it yet. So there's still a lot of melee combat balancing going on that they are going to have to fix. But I do suggest that if you do command block stuff that you get the snapshots and that you um, familiarize yourself with these new command blocks and this new way of making command block contraptions because this is going to become the new normal once Minecraft 1.9 is released. And while you can keep doing things the old way, we'll all laugh at you. My name is Sly Slime. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. And it's going to execute that one too, assuming that these are powered.